Hi everyone, my name's Katie. I'm also known as Clean Coach Katie. If you haven't come across my channel before, I am a personal trainer and also a running coach. I'm a keen runner myself and I've been running since 2012. First started off signing up crazily to a half marathon and then from then it's spiralled ever since. I've now done three marathons. I have trained for five of them. One of them uh, I couldn't complete because I was injured and the other one I didn't get to complete because we went to Kenya and uh, it rained um, 20 miles in so it got called off. So yeah I've completed three marathons. I've gone through lots and lots of different um, training blocks and cycles and today I'm talking about injury. Now, if you're a runner or if you do any form of exercise, you probably would have come across or faced some form of injury yourself at some point. They're not cool, they completely suck, and I wish that no one could ever get injured. However, um, they do come about as runners, especially because of the repetitive movement that we do. You're gonna flag up any weaknesses and those weaknesses are gonna become weaker. Um, so, we're gonna start off by talking about the difference between niggles and injuries. Now, a niggle is something which you experience in your body, whether that be a muscle or a tendon or a ligament, and it's, it is what it is, it's a niggle. You can feel it, but it doesn't actually prevent you or stop you from training completely. Um, I've had plenty myself, um, even in this training block, I'm training for the London Marathon, and I have had some issues with my adductor muscles which are on the inner side of the leg especially on the left hand side which has then been feeding into the quad muscles and been making it quite difficult for my training especially after anything that's been quite intense um, i've also had um, an achilles um, niggle too um, before i've had to take some full rest from that for a week um, and then sometimes i've been able to maintain it and work with it um, i've also had some injuries which have knocked me out for quite a long time and fortunately i've not experienced this um, anything that's knocked me out for a long time quite um, at the moment but I have suffered a um, stress fracture in my tibia so that's the um, long bone on the top of the leg and uh, can derive from shin splints pains so yes I've had my fair share of injuries I know that they're not cool and I uh, it's really hard to deal with them so this video today is trying to talk about how to deal with niggles and injuries now an injury can knock you out completely out of your training block and this is the hardest type of injury that you have to face especially if you're training for an event so if you've got a marathon especially when I had my stress fracture I had trained all the way up to my 20 mile race I think I was about five weeks or five or six weeks out from the marathon I'd done a 20 mile race and uh, I was really happy with the time but as soon as I finished I couldn't barely um, weight bear I couldn't walk um, it took me a few weeks to find out but it was a stress fracture and as soon like in the weeks after, I had hope that I would still be able to run the London Marathon. It would have been my second marathon at the time. And um, I then was just experiencing pain. I had been turned away from the hospital the first time I went back to a &E to find out. And I had an x-ray and it did show that I'd had a stress fracture. And that was it. That was the end of my journey. And it sucked. Even on that day itself, I think some of my friends I'd been training with were training for... They were running the Paris Marathon on that day. So I was on the, on the tracker. I was like tracking them on the app and yeah it's just gutting it is i i can totally re relate injuries injuries are not fun at all and they completely suck um so the thing is with an injury you the first part is just to come to terms with it uh, it takes a lot emotionally to try and process that if you've got a race booked up that you might not be able to do that race you then have to sort of process that and come to terms with it i know that it seems um quite silly to say it like that but that is the honest truth is that you need to you need to process that it may be the end of your um goalpost that you're working towards however rather than focusing on the fact what you can't do is then to focus on what you can do so with injuries some injuries you have to fully rest and recover there's nothing else that you can do you just have to follow the physios the doctors nurses advice whoever you've been given the advice from is just to follow that advice and to completely rest and recover until you're ready to start training again um, in that time you might want to try and find a new hobby or fill your time with something else where, that you to be productive that you would have done if you would have been running so you might have a lot of free time so find something else which takes your interest and just to fill that time and do something else that makes you happy because if running made you happy before you need to find something else to fill that void and then sometimes we recommend coming off social media for a little bit if you are looking on Strava constantly or you're feeling very 
um, jealous of all your friends. I mean, again, it is very tough to try and deal with it, but sometimes coming off social media for a little while can really help. Um, and the next thing then is when you are fully recovered is then to build back into a program gently and not overdo it. Again, I have been, um, I've done it myself where I feel like I'm good again and I've just gone straight full pelt into training. And then a few weeks later, six weeks or so later, I'm in the same position again. So you need to build up gradually and gently and pretend that you're all, not a beginner again, but you know, it work on the 10% rule that you're not overloading your body too quickly because if you do, then that's when another injury is gonna occur. So yes injuries they do put you out um and the hardest one to kind of deal with but um that's why i thought i'd cover it off first next we're going to move on to niggles now again i've had quite a few niggles recently myself um and again they're tough even though i've been able to train properly not i wouldn't say properly but i've been able to train i've been running i've still some day some weeks i've still been able to train four times a week um normally i typically i train five to six times a week in terms of run training and still been able to do four runs a week sometimes i've still felt like rubbish about it it's it's really hard to to not be i think the biggest the hardest thing is to like not be able to follow your training plan um and you feel like oh no i'm missing out and i'm gonna fall really far behind but i got knocked down a peg or two earlier this week by my coach and just to say look you've had a niggle you've had an injury you've had to adapt your plan like we're working the best that we can with the, working to the best outcome that we can right now and i was like yeah true there's no point throwing my toys out in the pram because you just have to adapt the best you can so um also i went to go and see my physio this week i had a great sports massage my legs feeling great today um we were chatting and in hindsight if you think about it who wholeheartedly ever is able to follow their training plan 100%? I don't think anyone is. Because if you think about all the different training that you've got, you know, sometimes you have to switch days around because of life and work. Sometimes you miss certain sessions because something comes up. It just, it's just life. And you shouldn't ever feel guilty because you don't follow a plan because I'm sure that even the elites, they'll miss stuff on their training plan because one week they'll feel really fatigued and tired and their, their coach will be like, right, okay, we're gonna have a rest week this week. We're gonna take it down and have a recovery week. And they they shouldn't then think, think, oh, I'm not missing, I'm missing my plan. It's just that their training plan's adapted to get the best out of their performance. So that's one thing is to, um, don't feel guilty for missing things. Adapt your training plan accordingly because the most important thing is to get to that start line um, as injury free as possible next is sort of change of the goalposts if needed so when i came into this training plan i kind of had an idea in time what i wanted to do the london marathon however now i'm still not sure on what i want to do i just want to this week i've had a really good week of training and i just kind of want to be in the best shape as i can be on that start line and have a good race because that's it at the end of the day i want to enjoy it so i'm changing the goalposts it might not be exactly the time that i want it to be but i'm gonna go my mindset now is okay focus on getting as strong as possible so when you're on that start line you're feeling good and you're feeling ready um as part of that because my body has been able allowed me to do so i've been doing some cross training so i've been doing some other forms of cardio work um it's great in the gym if you've got a gym environment or if you've got anywhere access to is to use things like the cross trainer the bike the skier anything the rowing machine anything that's going to get your heart rate going because your heart rate doesn't recognize whether you're running cycling swimming any or doing an exercise class as long as your heart rate is being exercised to that level then that's great i mean running your body needs to be conditioned to being on its feet for that long but with your heart rate um it doesn't know oh hello i've got the cat with me say hi harry <laughs> okay we're just gonna move him say hi harry one of the first protocols if you have got a niggle is just go straight to go and see a physio um get it checked out see what it is because more often than not wherever you're experiencing pain the pain isn't coming from that area it's coming from somewhere else so where, say if you have a problem with your a lot of people might have problems with their he's coming from my hand again but a lot of people have problems with their knees and normally that's down to a tight it band so the uh, all of the muscle and the tendons are pulling and they then pull on the knee so that's um so go and get it checked out get some advice because as i said more often than not wherever the pain is it's driving there's a tightness or there's a weakness somewhere else 
Um, also listen to your physio's advice and um, really listen to their recovery process. If they tell you not to run, don't run. If they tell you to take rest days in between runs, do so. Really follow their advice just so you can get back onto the road as soon as possible. And then when you're feeling good again, don't come back too quickly. You have to trust the process. And I say this to all my clients, it's the number one thing is to trust the process. Like Sometimes it doesn't feel like what you're doing is going to end up with the results but you just need to take each run and each session each cross training session each strength and recovery session and just believe that it's going to get you to where you need to be and i've been having the same thing my myself this week feeling at the start of the week I had a really bad run and i felt like that i had no speed left and then i've just done two other sessions this week and they've been really good so i need to shut my mouth and trust the process so I hope that helps any of you that are dealing with any niggles or injuries at the moment. Um, if you are dealing with a niggle and you are being able to train through it, just make sure you look, manage it and look after it because the main goal is to get to that start line. Um, especially when you're sort of leading up to a race, um, weaknesses really start to show. You're tired, you're emotional, everything feels like it's on top of you. However, the, the taper is normally, it's around the corner. So um, especially anyone that's training for spring marathons, just be patient with it and um, just get to that start line as in the best shape as you possibly can and just enjoy it because that's what this process is all about. People don't sign up for marathons to put themselves through pain. They sign up because it's a challenge and they want to enjoy it. So I hope you found this video useful and I hope that this brightens up anyone's day that might be suffering at the minute. We're all in this together.